The James Webb Space Telescope has seen a dark star powered by dark matter. Maybe. Astrophysicists are now waiting for confirmation from other telescopes. If this is confirmed, that would be very interesting, because I was pretty sure dark stars don't exist. What's a dark star and what does it mean if they've indeed found one? Let's have a look. By the way, you can also read the science news on sciencewtg.substack.com. Our sun is about 4.6 billion years old. It creates radiation and heat by nuclear fusion of light elements like hydrogen and helium. All stars today work like this. But in the early universe, stars could have worked entirely differently. They could have been powered by dark matter. That's a mysterious type of matter which we can't see, but that astrophysicists think makes up 80% of all matter in the universe. Is dark matter really out there? Well, we're still trying to figure it out, and finding dark stars might be the way to do it. In 2007, Katie Fries and collaborators pointed out that dark matter, odd as it sounds, can light up gas so it can make stars shine. This doesn't happen by nuclear fusion, but because the particles of the dark matter bump into each other and annihilate in a flash of light. This creates energy which heats up normal matter, and the normal matter then emits further radiation. Radiation. So the normal matter begins to shine. It's become a star. The name dark star is somewhat misleading. They're not dark. They're actually very bright, but they are powered by dark matter. Also, marketing said that annihilation-powered star tested poorly with focus groups. Dark stars, however, don't shine for long because they use up their dark fuel very quickly. Then they collapse and the normal matter goes on to form stars as we know them. So you have to look for those dark stars in the very early universe. These dark stars are very different from normal stars because they form from big and fluffy clouds of dark matter which attracts normal matter. This means they are huge and very spread out. They have diameters which are typically 10 times the distance from the Earth to the Sun, and they can grow to masses more than a million times higher than that of our Sun. Dark stars, if they exist, are extremely bright, but compared to other early stars, which have a surface temperature of up to 50,000 Kelvin or so, dark stars are cold with just about 10,000 Kelvin or so. But do they exist? Well, in the new paper, a group of astrophysicists, including Katie Fries, who proposed the dark stars, say that they found four objects in the web data that totally look like supermassive dark stars with masses around a million suns each. They can't be normal stars, they say, because normal stars don't become that large and bright so quickly. One of these candidates is special because it has a spectral absorption line that fits a particular isotope of helium. This is what they expect for a big and fluffy dark star. This is very exciting, if correct, but the signal-to-noise ratio at the moment is just about 2.4, so that's not a lot. They are now waiting for this to be confirmed by other experiments. For example, the ALMA telescope array in Chile can have a closer look at the spectral lines. This could help rule out that it's some sort of nebula, and the Chandra satellite could look at it in the X-ray range. If they are right, this finding would be strong support for a particular type of dark matter that are weakly interacting mass of particles and they need to be able to make a self-annihilation. These weakly interacting mass of particles, WIMPs for short, have been the most popular dark matter candidate for decades. They've fallen out of favor in the past years because, contrary to expectations, the particles were not found at the Large Hadron Collider. This is why I don't think dark stars exist. But for the dark stars, the particles don't need to be extremely massive and I admit there are mass ranges which could be compatible with all the data we have. Leaving aside my misgivings about dark matter in general, or WIMPs in particular, dark stars would be extremely useful for pinning down the properties of the dark matter particles, and that could finally move the field forward. This is why it's a good paper. 
but because the signal-to-noise ratio is so low, I give this a bullshit rating of 7. I adjust my Mondo meter slightly in the direction of dark matter, but with a signal-to-noise ratio of 2.4, so you can't be really sure about it. Problems. I'm sure you have a few. But problem-solving is a skill you can train, just like any other. I found that a simple and effective way to do this is with Brilliant. Brilliant offers courses on a large variety of topics in science, computer science and mathematics. All their courses have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. Whether you want to learn to think like an engineer, brush up your knowledge of algebra or want to learn coding in Python, Brilliant has you covered. It's an effective way to build up your knowledge and train your problem-solving skills. And you can do it whenever and wherever you have the time. And of course, I have a special offer for viewers of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabine or scan the QR code, you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.